So I'm I'm right now in front of Kangla Fort. Uh, so people coming here can't walk uh, or can't stop deny coming here uh, because it's a place where you can actually find the present and the past of Manipur or Imphal. So uh, basically, uh, this was kind of a secretariat uh, long back when the kings uh, ruled the land. So basically, it was considered as the capital of uh, Imphal or Manipur. and it's called kangla and kangla fort and it's situated near to the imphal river and it's surrounded by basically the uh, imphal moat it's called uh, the moat uh, the kangla moat uh, so it's always recommended for people to come here and see the um, remnants or uh, the, the 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 very king's uh, uh, secretariat over here so yeah there is ticket over here the, you have to pay 20 tickets for 20 rupees for um domestic uh, people for international is something around 100 rupees so let's go inside let's say the ticket and go inside so in 1899 uh, british came in here and uh, they fought a war against the king and it was completely destroyed the entire kangla was completely destroyed and it was the end of kangla uh, during that time and then later on uh, in 2004 uh, this place was later um, handed over to the government uh, in presence of uh, prime minister um, manmohan singh yeah so um, it was with azam rifles and then they probably transported it to um, the government in 2004 and then post that um, it was open to the public and the people came here to um, basically um, <coughs> to see the kangla fort at that time only it was open to the public since then it was under uh, assam rifles but the first stop for you would be the hejadak you can see a big tree over there and a uh, few um, place to sit uh, and hejadak is basically a, a glass enclosure where you can see big boats inside it so it looks so royal and it's part of beliefs of meri tribe uh, for the believers it's more kind of boats uh, used for pow- by the powerful gods a buddha and a bandam are the big ones that you can see in the uh, glass enclosure and the other one are the small one that they use for um, boat racing competition so after coming out from hejadak before reaching again utra uh, on the left side you can see the ebuddha pagamba temple so according to meti people pagamba is the most powerful god uh, it looks like a, a diamond uh, literally the the shape of the uh, temple right and and the height of the temple is around 48 feet li pagamba became the ruler of the land uh, because of his skills and what of things he did so um that's what uh, the belief is and uh, that's why a buddha pagamba temple is there to praise him or to worship him and uh, it took around 6 years to renovate this temple Uh, from 2004 to 2010 to get back to this shape once you get down from ebuddha pagamba temple you walk to utra so utra as i said is a courtyard where king makes his statements and announces his decisions so kangla shah like this big sculptures of horse um are part of belief to protect the king so if any, anything bad happens to the land king starves here like he comes out of the steps and then he st- sits here and starve for the entire land and kanglasha is considered uh, someone to solve the things for the king uh, just like a minister right in our stories the king and the minister so kanglasha was considered as kind of a kani as well when um, when the king steps out for something it's good to see or it's a good fortune for the king when he steps out for something So uh, on the left side also you can see some temples uh, behind the uh, utra and on uh, the other side you can also see graveyards of some famous kings um so it's like 1840 to 1850 um was part of the burma war and bodha chandra was the last uh, king 1941 uh, and saw the world war and then he gave his rule to the government so his graveyard is also near to this utra so after the utra you go further like uh, if you're facing utra right side you go inside a lot of trees around 
and then i entered into govindji temple which was so divine like i really felt the presence of radha govinda especially the busy believers consider this as it's blessed with the presence of radha govinda and it was built in 1842 by the king narasing uh, but um, there was a uh, earthquake in 1868 which damaged this temple a lot and then it was renovated the next year itself and later on um, the government or the um, archaeological department took this up and then they stopped the entire worship thing so there is no active worship happening here so after this i also went to another uh, complex where there was some uh, sewing or some kind of business transaction happening some kind of offices and there was a, a few pond over there when i went to there the saw a pond very old pond over there as well which might be built for certain king or the people or for the disciples to take bath and maybe for the king as well and also you can see a lot of um, bath tubs kind of thing inside a enclosed and enclosure and so we entered from uttra to the right side and we, we saw all those places on the left side you find a canteen where you can uh, get snacks food items drinks everything it really some traditional snacks also is available behind that you can see a rose garden and on the uh, longer view you can see a mountain over there as well so this i spent some time over there had some snacks um and a tea um with the view behind so it was nice i met few friends over there where i could um talk to them and get to know about what these specific um snacks are um, so i'll put this food things all together into a one video of the food that i explored in manipur so after this i just walked further to the left side of uh, the kangla from uttra so where i i uh, saw a pond a different moat as well and then i further walked into and then saw a temple um this was much close but not much writings on what temple it is so this is all about uh, kangla fort people coming here should definitely visit this and um, see you in another video with another place take care and bye bye